Let's look at nine possible reasons why some knives have one edge, some have two, and some have none. Hi folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiator, and now we're going to be looking at knives and daggers from across hundreds of years of history, and really the nine reasons that I'm going to look at, or possible reasons, in this video are spanning across all technology, all cultures, all periods. They are fundamental reasons why different types of knife and dagger from across history might have one single edge, they might have two edges, Sometimes they have one primary edge and they have a false edge, as it's called, or a kind of secondary bevel at the, at the back, or indeed certain of them don't have any edges at all, they just have a point. And I'm going to be showing plenty of examples in this video, some of them are here in my hands, some of them are medieval, some of them are 19th, 20th century, some of them are uh, 18th century, uh, 16th century, and we've even got a bayonet thrown in there as well for good measure. Now, before I get into those nine reasons, I want to also mention the there is some etymological uh, questions and confusions uh, and distractions for the purposes of this video around the word knife and dagger. A lot of people would say, oh, a dagger is double-edged and used for stabbing and a knife is single-edged and used for cutting. That doesn't really cut the mustard. If we go back to medieval etymology, a, a dagger is a type of knife. So if, for example, if we look at the uh, late 14th, 30th, 15th century works of Fiore de Liberi, he describes the rondel dagger, which is one of these, a specialized type of uh, dagger which was used, and we could call it an anti-armor or an armored fighting dagger used in the uh, end of the 14th and right the way through the 15th and into the 16th centuries. Uh, he refers to this as a dagger, but he also refers to it as a coltello, as a knife. And obviously that's Italian, and it's going to be different in different languages and at different times but generally speaking a dagger is just a subset of knife and you can class a dagger in whatever way makes you happy different people have done it um, differently at different times so really let's just consider these all as types of knife now of course when you come to decide what type of knife or dagger to create to be used for a specific context specific purpose you have to design it and somewhere you can learn an absolute ton about design and improve your skills is Skillshare. Whether it's understanding period design or simply principles of design, or indeed if it's understanding social history, then there's something on Skillshare for you. Now I've got a special deal for you here just for this channel for Skillshare for the first thousand of you to click on that link below. But I've been using Skillshare recently, particularly as you know if you've seen recent videos, to enhance my skills for photography and storytelling through photography, which I use for my antique sword business, but also on a personal level and for some r and I've been enhancing my art skills as well and doing some of the illustration and other art courses they've got on there. Now what a lot of people don't know is you can also watch some history courses on Skillshare also and I've been watching the English History box set recently. This is presented by Eve Williams who's a really good presenter, really concise, very clear. One that I've been looking at most recently is the Wars of the Roses. The reason being that I'm brushing up on my knowledge and understanding of the Wars of the Roses which is a very complicated period. I'm sure that like me your day-to-day is filled with tasks and endless to-do lists so why not prioritize your self-care and wellness by using Skillshare as a way to invest in yourself unwind and relax so the special offer that I've got for you today is the first thousand people only thousand who click on that link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare there are absolutely no catches at all just click on that link start exploring learning and uh, upscaling learning new skills whatever you want to do exploring what is available on Skillshare check out that link now and I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Now getting back to these nine reasons, so let me put this fistful of knives down for a second. The very first point, I'll grab one, here we go, here's a cookery, um, the very first point I want to consider is in a way that one of the most fundamental things when it comes to creating any tool and that is what you have available. Okay, so point one is, you could call this economics, you could call it material availability, you could call it technology. Um, it could come under lots of different he headings, but essentially it's what you have available. So fundamentally, when you come to design uh, or create, manufacture a knife or dagger, whatever purpose you want it to fulfill, you are going to have to consider what is economically viable to do, what materials you have available, and what technology, you know, do you have the ability 
to forge a two-edged blade with the materials, with the tools and technology you have available. Okay, so fundamentally, economics, technology, that is the first point. And for any of you who don't know, it certainly takes more work to create a double-edged blade than a single-edged blade. It doesn't matter whether you're working in flint, for example, or obsidian, uh, so, you know, prehistoric materials, whether you're working in bronze, or whether you're working in iron and steel. In all of these, despite the fact they use completely different methods of manufacture, uh, to form one sharp edge, or to form two sharp edges, clearly it is more work to create twice as many sharp edges. Equally, to create the first edge is more work. If you just want to create something with a point, that is very much less effort or less technology than to create something with an edge and a point. Now, if you want to create two edges and a point, that is more work yet. So on a very fundamental basic level, it doesn't matter what material or what technology level you're talking about, even if you've got uh, modern tools and you're making with a you know modern belt sander or modern steels, modern heat treatment, even in the modern world, it is more effort to create a double-edged blade than a single-edged one. Now, given point number one, point number two is quite simply this. If one edge is enough, why have two? If the tool that you're going to use, and here we've got a chopper, okay, so it's got a bollock knife um, style hilt, uh, made by Hector Cole, incidentally, nice boxwood grip, bought this many, many years ago, but it's got a massive, almost sax-like blade on it. Now, this is a chopper. I have chopped up wood with this, I've chopped down saplings with this. It is a whopping great chopper, and much like something like a barong or a machete, it doesn't need two edges. If your thing doesn't need two edges, then clearly you're not going to go to the trouble of putting two edges on it. In fact, putting two edges on it could be detrimental to the functioning of that tool, and that will be covered in future points, which I'm going to come through. So, point number two is quite as simply as this. If you only need one edge, well then, you'll only have one edge. Why put two on if you don't need it? So point number three, I've placed it here, is very important to understand why you would put two edges on a thing. If we actually look at this knife for a second, it is primarily a single-edged hunting knife of a type used in boar hunting or even uh, deer hunting for um, finishing off an, a, a wounded animal or an animal that, uh, you know, defending yourself even against something like a boar. Um, this is a knife which has one primary edge but then does have a secondary edge added and a blunt part at the back here that could be uh, used um, for support. We'll come into that point later. But it is fundamentally certainly that part of the is double-edged. Now, why go to all the trouble, economic, time, skill, um, possibly even heat treatment issues, of making a double-edged point? The fundamental, most important reason, and a very popular topic um, on this channel, is penetration. Uh, if you want to achieve deep penetration, two edges are better than one. Why is that? Well, quite simply, when you punch a, po a point into something, you're very often having to overcome the friction or resistance of the thing that you're going through. Now, don't only necessarily think about uh, flesh, which is obviously fairly morbid, and equally skin, possibly hide, you know, leather, hair, and things like this. But additionally, if we're talking about warfare, that could be clothing, okay? Um, if we're talking about slightly more advanced warfare, then that could be certain types of armor as well. It might be fabric armor later on. It might be things like mail, aka chain mail. Um, however, getting through metallic armor is really quite difficult. For the most part, things which have two edges and are designed to stab, whether it's a spear or whether it's a knife, are designed to shear, cut, and part the material that they are entering, okay? So two edges fundamentally are there to assist in penetration of whatever you happen to be sticking it into. Therefore, if you have a target which is likely to be at all resistant to penetration, for example, it might be wearing thick winter clothing, having two edges is advantageous because if it only had one edge, it might fail to penetrate, which you clearly don't want to do, especially if that opponent, for example, might be trying to stab you back with something which has two edges. If they've got two edges, you want two edges. Um, so something with two edges is more likely to penetrate to a a fatal depth than something with one edge. Just a little bit extra on this point, pardon one, um, for, for the medieval period because it's particularly pertinent to this point and important. We should note that 
certain daggers in the medieval period only have one edge, like this rondel dagger here. It is a stabbing implement, but it only has one edge. However, others have two edges, and some of them don't have any edges as well. In fact, I was looking at a rondel dagger uh, recently in a museum that didn't have any edges. It was essentially a square section. So sometimes they are just a point just for penetration. Sometimes they have the addition of one edge, which can be used, can be to assist penetration, it can be used for cutting to some degree as well. We'll talk a little bit more about these uh, issues in a second. But it should be noted that in the medieval period, certain other daggers around at the exact same time do sometimes have broader double-edged blades. Now, clearly one of these can be used for cutting more effectively than the other one, um, but potentially it can also be related to the type of targets that they're likely to be penetrating. This one here might be jammed into the links of someone's uh, male gusset, for example, the chain mail in their armpit, fighting in armour. This one, more likely to be carried in the civilian world, is more likely to be stabbed into people wearing clothes, quite thick clothes or layers of clothes in the medieval period. So despite the fact that they are both fundamentally for the same thing, for stabbing people, they are for stabbing different types of people in different environments. Also we find if we look at, for example, 19th century Bowie knives, I'll grab a, another example of this, is actually an early 20th century one, we often find that the full set okay you'll, so you'll notice that this has a bevel on the back here is not actually sharpened you can actually probably see the glint of light up there so it's not actually an edge but it is a bevel now clearly this is a certain amount of effort that has to be gone into to put this bevel on the back why go to the effort of putting a bevel on and not a full edge well that's a complicated um, topic which can be covered by some of the points that I'm going to go through here but notice let's just fixate on the fact that they have put a bevel on why do they put a bevel on quite simply because it gives a more acute point and reduces the amount of resistance going into the target for example a thick winter coat or something like that so what we've ended up with is a what we call a flattened um, diamond section even though there's no edge at the back here there's only an edge at the front and that makes this a more effective stabbing tool even though it's not literally an edge on the back, we've still got a bevel there, so there's less resistance at the back edge. Now, the next reason to have two edges, a front and a back, or a true edge and a false edge, as we'd often refer to it, is something which I think a lot of you will have immediately thought of, but isn't actually very prominent in the sources that we study, the descriptive accounts of knife fights, or indeed the instructional treatises and manuals that survive from um, the medieval Renaissance and later periods in European history, or indeed if we look at uh, non-European as well, if we look at Asian sources, and that is back edge cuts. So clearly with a sword, if you've got a front edge, you can cut that way, and if you've got a back edge, you can cut that way without having to turn the sword around. So one of the uh, common differences we make between longsword, European longsword, and Japanese katana, for example, is a katana would have to cut with the front edge that way, and if you wanted to cut back up the reverse line, you'd have to turn the blade around and cut up like that. You can't just do that if you've got a single-edged blade. With a double-edged blade, you can literally go down and up, or uh, just cutting upwards up underneath someone's arm, and you can cut with the back edge. Now. Clearly that can physically be done with knives. So a double-edged knife, uh, an advantage of having two edges is that you can do these cuts at angles with the back edge that you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't have a back edge. Um, so yes, categorically, that is another reason for having two edges on a knife. However, I should emphasize that there are only a limited amount of descriptive accounts, either in instructional sources, um, or in descriptive accounts of actual fights, of the back edge being used in fights. Um, mostly, from what I've seen, it tends to be in a clinch where you can't bring the front edge to bear, but by turning the blade around this way, you can bring the back edge in, a, in all, almost in a raking fashion. And that can, of course, be applied down low behind the uh, butt, basically, or behind the hamstrings, behind the back of the leg, uh, where you can get to various nasty veins and obviously to the tendons as well. So back edge cuts certainly can be done as a thing and are described in some sources, but they're not massively common. But nevertheless, that is a solid reason to have two edges on your knife. But nevertheless, point number four there, back edge cuts, I think is definitely worth mentioning and was something that was done and is certainly a good reason for having two edges 
on your uh, knife or dagger if you want to use back edge cuts. You've got to have two edges. Now, point number five is somewhat difficult for me to explain in a concise way, but I'm going to try. And that is strength or durability or stiffness of the blade. In other words, how thick the blade is versus still being able to cut. So fundamentally, point number five is to do with durability, strength, rigidity, this kind of thing. So if we apply this, for example, to the rondel dagger, it's very clear, this is almost kind of at the extreme end, that something like a rondel dagger, if you're jamming it into someone's armor or the gaps between plates of armor, you need something that's almost like a little crowbar, like a little pry bar, and the point is clearly the primary attack attacking mechanism on it but if with your rondel dagger like with this one you want to have an edge so this has a single edge and why you might be saying why might you want to have an edge well for example in the treatises we study we can see it occasionally being used to cut the straps or points on armor so if you're there in and you're wrestling you might be fighting on the ground you're trying to jam your point into any gaps you can find in the armor but you manage to get one of the laces or points that's holding a plate on or there's a strap um, and this is shown in treatises the edge can be Used to actually cut that in order to pull the plate up and then start stabbing into it. So the edge can be used in a in a slicing or paring away of things, even if this type of dagger is never really going to be used like a slashing weapon, like something like a, a bowie knife or something like that might be, um, or obviously a chopper like a cookery. Um, but nevertheless, the edge can be used in, in useful ways in combat. Now, if you want to have a blade which is incredibly thick and rigid, and you want it to have one edge, that's fine. That's fairly easily achievable by making a triangle. But if you want your blade to have two edges that are still able to cut effectively, you're faced with a couple of options. Because of the edge geometry, you now need to make your blade either thinner or twice as wide. Uh, so you can end up with a blade if it's twice as wide, it's not going to be so effective at, for example, penetrating through male armor uh, because it's now much wider. It's now got a broader profile. And unlike the narrow blade, which is going to punch through one ring and keep on going in and penetrate deeply enough, the broader blade will just get stuck. Um, so you're faced with a problem. And then if you make it thinner, you make it less durable. <laughs> so uh, you're kind of caught in the catch-22. And it has to be pointed out as well, this is a um, so-called dungeon. Um, so this is a 17th century and, uh, descendant of a uh, bollock dagger, but the blade on it is sort of um, similar to found, found on some rondel daggers. And it is a purely, it's got, it's basically non-edged, but it's a triangle. It's a thick, completely rigid triangle. It's actually got a thumb placer on the blade here. And that will punch through things, but it's basically almost useless as a cutting implement. Um, so you've got to weigh up if you're making something very thick and rigid for stabbing and also therefore durable because it's got to survive contact with armor then you can maybe get one semi-functional sharp edge on it but to put two sharp edges on it they're either not going to be very good as edges because of the edge geometry or if you want to make them very effective cutting edges you've got to make the blade either broader or thinner which then goes against what you were trying to achieve with the durability and thickness of the blade. So, point number five, durability and strength not always being able to be balanced effectively with cutting effectiveness in the same blade. So, point number six is chopping effectiveness. Um, and this, again, it's a slightly nuanced point. So, on a fundamental level, a lot of famous choppers, I'm using the cookery here, I could go for something like the uh, sax, or this is a sax blade on a bollock dagger, it's a bit of a strange thing, um, but, you know, the sax or the barong, uh, the parang or the uh, machete, for example, they are famously, usually, single-edged choppers. Now, on one hand, so this is a two-part point, I suppose. On one hand, they are choppers, so what you want is mass towards the tip. If you want mass towards the tip, a good way of achieving it is having a thick, blunt back. Uh, if you have a thick, blunt back, um, then you can keep all the mass up at the tip, and it will chop with the force almost of an axe, or towards an axe, more axe-like chops. But additionally, the nuanced pit and the, the, the double edge to the point, I suppose, is that you don't need a back edge. Okay, so with these types of choppers, if their primary attack is not thrusting, it's not back edge cuts, it's a very powerful front edge chop, 
you don't need a back edge so why put one on as we've looked at in the previous points but additionally you want the mass at the tip and if you start grinding away or forging away um, material from the spine you're essentially reducing the mass at the tip of that weapon. Yes, you might make it more effective at thrusting. Yes, you might gain the ability to do back edge cuts. But if that's not what you want to do, if primarily is what you want to give is just a really powerful chop, you don't need to put an edge on the back of here. Now I do realize there might be some people who are fans of some of the modern forms of knife um, that have come around, which actually have a raised yelman. And indeed the closest comparison to this would be the Turkish uh, pala or kilic. Um, and perhaps certain types of certain types of uh, yatagan um, and things like this um, can actually have a raised full edge at the back, and that achieves the two goals in one. You have the mass at the tip, and you have an edge. So there are ways of getting around it, but that's an expensive and complex piece of. Uh, manufacturing that if you don't need to do it you don't need a back edge you don't need to be able to thrust you just want a powerful chopper you don't bother doing it so it's this is kind of two points married together heavy choppers very often have a thick back blunt spine because that's good enough and conducive to what you want to achieve with that particular weapon. Now, point number seven is about symmetry and asymmetry. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. First of all, if you've got two edges, your blade is to some degree symmetrical. In other words, I mean, even if we take what looks like an asymmetrical blade, I can cut and slash with that, and I can do back edge cuts with here, but if I turn it around, I can do the same with both edges still. Something like this uh, Renaissance era Mangoche, which does have a side ring, and I'll talk about that in a second, that has two edges. It means that these were very often used uh, with a rapier um, with, in the left hand, hence the, the expression man gauche. Um, and it means that you put your thumb up against the flat and either edge could be used to cut. Now, predominantly these are stabbing weapons as it happens. So you could say that the two edges on these really are, are for better penetration, but, they were sometimes used for cutting, I'm certain. Uh, you do get single-edged versions of Mangosh, but generally they're usually double-edged. Now that does mean, of course, you can cut either way when you don't necessarily even have a front and a back edge, you're holding it sideways, okay? Um, but if we were using this uh, in the other hand as a knife, okay, what it means is that it doesn't matter which way round, according to the blade anyway, it doesn't ma matter which way round it is, but you can do the same things with either because it's completely symmetrical. So another reason for having, this is point number seven, for having two edges is that you can do the same thing no matter which way round you hold the blade. Now, some of you might be shouting at the screen at this point, but Matt, this isn't symmetrical because it has a ring, a side ring, on the um, projecting out of one side of the, the dagger. So this is actually asymmetrical, but here's an interesting point. These edges, the blade is symmetrical, okay? Now, if I'm using this as a left hand dagger, I'm having the ring out here and my thumb against the flat inside here, my dagger's symmetrical. What if I now put my rapier away and I put my mangosh away, but I'm now in civilian life and someone attacks me in an inn and I've got to defend myself at dagger stabbing range with a knife and I pull this out in my right hand. So it's gone from being a left hand weapon to being a right hand weapon. Now I might be holding it in the exact same way, but notice that which is the front edge and which is the back edge has changed, but it doesn't matter because it's a symmetrical blade. So my finger ring, uh, sorry, my side ring is pointing out to the left that way got an edge. Pointing out to the right that way, still got an edge. So symmetry, asymmetry, um, sometimes having a symmetrical blade for a number of reasons can be really, really useful. And on a fundamental level, a lot of people will point out as well that if this would apply to swords, that if you had a primary edge, your front edge if you want to call it that, and you were using it for slashing and cutting and it got blunted, you could theoretically turn it around and use the other and you've got a freshly sharpened, nicely untouched blade. So symmetry of blade can be really, really useful even when you've got an asymmetrical guard. So point number eight uh, is a reason to have either a single edge only or only a partial second edge. So in other words, either having completely blunt on the back, like uh, something like a sax or a, uh, a cookery or a machete, 
or indeed having a fair portion of the back of the blade blunt, even if you've got a full sedge up here. And this reason is because you want to support or apply force to the back of the blade. So in a camping situation, that might be that you want to use your camping knife to put on top of a log so you can hammer on the back to split a log. Okay, with another stick, for example, bam, bam, bam. And you don't want to have a nice sharp or fragile edge on the back because you want to be able to hammer it. Another example might be with the rondel dagger, for example. And there are many techniques uh, and situations fighting with a rondel dagger where you want to put your hand against the blunt back of the blade. And this is also done in Japanese martial arts, for example. Well, it's done with swords, with katana, tachi, but it's also done with uh, tanto and wakasashi as well. So um, this would apply to the tanto where you want to apply force to the back of your blade where it's nice and blunt and it's advantageous to have it blunt at the back for combat reasons additionally there might be um, you'll notice some knives have got a blunt bit on the flat of the blade I talked about that with the left hand dagger but many um, many types of knife actually have a blunt section that's sometimes got jimping on the back here which actually gives you an extra bit of support if you're doing something like whittling or skinning or something like that so it can be for you know camping or hunting purposes not necessarily combat purposes but basically it's applying energy or force or support to the back of the blade which means that having a blunt back is advantageous now funnily enough i mentioned i'd talk about bayonets there's a few aspects, if we take this Yatagan, this is a Enfield rifle Yatagan Bayonet 1853 pattern. Um, there's a couple of interesting features which relate to this point that I'm just making now, but also earlier points. Something to note about bayonets of this type is this is modelled on a Yatagan, a Ottoman Turkish Yatagan blade, but mounted up so it can go, the rifle barrel goes through there and it clips on there. Now there's a few advantages to this, uh, having this arrangement. This has got a full sedge up here, so it's got one long primary edge and then it has a full sedge down to there and then a very thick blunt spine. Now theoretically we could say yes it's for supporting the blade, it's for splitting logs, and, but it's not for any of those reasons in this particular case. This is made this way for a number of reasons. Firstly, and this again, this combines several of the points that we've just looked through. Number one, why bother having a double edge up here? Penetration. This is a bayonet, it's supposed to go on the end of a rifle and be used for stabbing. So clearly, it's a spear, so clearly penetration, very important. So what we've got up here is literally referred to as a spear point. So we've got a double-edged spear point at the tip here, great. Penetration, that's the primary goal of the bayonet. However, it has secondary uses. It has one long primary edge because yes, indeed, this can be used in the hand as a short sword. Okay, good, we know that. Why is having this long, blunt back edge advantageous? Why not have the edge running all the way down to the base? First reason, strength, okay? Remember, we want this to be a very thick, rigid uh, and durable weapon. In some ways similar to the rondel dagger because the rondel dagger is under exerted under a lot of force sometimes with leverage once it's stuck into something. So you want it to be stiff and strong. Very important in the case of a bayonet because the bayonet is added onto the end of a long lever, a rifle, so that it comes under huge amounts of lateral stress. So we want this to be rigid and durable and strong. So having a thick spine at the back is the best way of achieving that. If we put a, uh, an edge at the back, it will become less strong for this length of blade anyway. A shorter one wouldn't be so, so much of a problem, and certainly we get double-edged bayonets, which are shorter. Um, but there is another reason, finally, which you may not have thought about or realized if you're not familiar with the loading of black powder rifles. When this is mounted on the rifle, you have a ramrod and you have to ram down here. Now, that's one reason why the Yatagan bla blade works very well, because it's away from the line of the muzzle, which means when you're ramming your ramrod down, think about the Crimean War or the American Civil War, ramming your ramrod down, your hand's not going to jam into the point of the blade accidentally. But additionally, you don't have an edge down here, so it's nice and blunt. So yet again, it's to do with manual contact potentially accidental or deliberate with the back of the blade so it's good that it's blunt down here and only sharp up at the tip.
So number nine is a final reason for having two edges. Again, we've looked at, there's lots of disadvantages to having two edges. It makes the blade potentially less durable or you have to have it thinner or wider to have effective edges. It's more effort and cost and time to make, all of these things. So why have two edges? This is the final reason I'm gonna give Now, them. if you've read any World War II era or just post-World War II combatives, then you would know this reason. But one of the reasons for having two edges as opposed to one, is as an anti-grabbing device, essentially. Now, you might be thinking, what do I mean by that? You can't just grab a knife. You can grab a knife, okay? And uh, in self-defense, one of the methods of preventing yourself from ending up with lots of holes in your torso or your head or your um, windpipe or anything like that is to grab and control the opponent's blade. Now, when a blade has a blunt back edge, it is easier to do that, okay? When you do grab a knife, obviously you do whatever you need to do to stay alive, but if we look at the medieval and renaissance treatises, and indeed if we look at uh, modern uh, self-defense and everything else, grabbing the blade and controlling the blade in any way that you possibly can, obviously, if you can grab the person's arm, wrist, hand, hilt, whatever, you do what you can, but grabbing the blade when it's got a blunt back is easier. And if we look at the um, World War II commando stuff, I don't have a commando dagger here at the moment, um, but when we're looking at something where we've got a double-edged blade, it is clear that when you're um, taking on someone who may or may not also have a knife, they might be unarmed and just trying to fight you, they might have a trench club, or they might have the, a knife in their right hand and be trying to grab with their left, if you've got two edges, it makes it more difficult for them to get a good grab on your blade and control your weapon, which in knife fighting is super, super important. So point number nine, anti-grabbing. That is a good reason if we look at the Fairburn Sykes uh, Commando Dagger, for example, that is why that dagger has two edges on it. It's to prevent, or the main reason, it's to prevent the opponent grabbing it. So I hope this has been fun and enlightening and thought provoking. Uh, maybe you've thought of some other reasons for having a single edge or a double edge or neither or no edges at all. Uh, as always, I welcome your posts in the comments below um, and I really look forward to seeing if there's if there's anything I didn't think of, if there's anything I missed. I'm sure there might be a couple of, uh, you know, there might be two or three things that I've skipped over or maybe things you think that I didn't explain clearly enough or you want to know more about. If you want me to talk about something in this video that I've alluded to or touched on in a bit more depth um, or perhaps with some experimentation, then feel free to uh, post your requests below. And I always welcome suggestions for new videos as well in general on any topic. Um, so if you uh, check out the links below, as always, thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Um, awesome resource. Go and check out that link below right now. Um, no reason not to that I can think of. Um, and also check out my other links. You might find other stuff of uh, interest down there. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. Please leave a like on this video. It makes a big difference to me uh, churning out these videos to see that you like them um, and have reacted to them. And I will see you really soon back on the channel again. Take care, folks.